And what's going on, YouTube? It's your boy Joe Fontaine, the VIP Sound Lab. And just want to do a little quick little tutorial machine 1.8. I had some questions as far as getting the plugins. And again, I, I, I did this a, a while back, but again, I just wanted to update. Uh, we have some new members who might not be familiar with it. And we want to do it with a little updated sound quality and video quality. So, yeah, to get your plugin set up, I'm going to show you that. It's really simple. And I just want to show you some insert effects uh, on that uh, also. So, to get your plugin set up, it's really no big thing. What you need to do is you just, you just need to go over here where it says File. And what you do is where it says your um, preferences. Okay. Now, you notice right here we have a couple of options. Oh, here's your general options. You can re reload your last project. So in other words, when you start machine, it's going to reload the last project that you did. You know, if you have a certain uh, input channel that you want to start off with, with a certain MIDI controller, <clears throat> you have that option under defaults. You can select your beat pattern. Like, for example, if you wanted it to uh, start off at four bars, eight bars, you know, whatever the case may be, you have that option there. Um, quantize input just basically means if you wanted to quantize when you're playing it, when you're recording it, uh, you could turn it off. If you want to get that more human feel, you have that option. And you also have template projects. Like you don't have to, like you can open up machine with a certain template, like a certain project that you did. You might have your inserts and effects or uh, multi-chain effects set up. So you can save a couple of template projects and set those up here. So whenever you open up machine, you don't have to be completely starting from scratch. You might have a certain plugin that you might want to start up, set up across the board. So that's what that's for. Use your pass. That's just basically like your library and stuff like that. Like whatever you scan into machine, you can do that. Like here's some sounds I, I scanned in because I'm on a different computer. So I'm basically migrating some sounds over to this computer. So I'm still in the pro process of doing that. That's why you don't see uh, too many here. And that basically gets into when you go over here, when you're importing your sounds and you tag them, you add your tags and filters and things that nature. So you can browse through them with the hardware controller. Uh, libraries, that's just basically, this is just the factory machine library. And uh, again, I'm still putting stuff in here. The hardware, this is basically if you want to control the brightness of your screen, the contrast, um, the sensitivity of the pads. And of course, you can have you know, your default colors and things set up. Like if you want a certain group color uh, on certain scenes or things of that nature, that's where you'll, uh, you'll find all that here. But for the question, which is basically plugins, you see, I have mine right here, basically inside my Ableton live VST folder. That's just my preference. You don't have to, you know, some people have a Steinberg VST folder. They have a custom VST folder. Wherever your VST folder is inside your computer for your DLL files, your AU files, if you're in a MacBook, <clears throat> you basically scan that file in machine. I'm not going to scan mine because it would just take, man, it'll probably take like five minutes of the video scanning them because it, it takes a little minute uh, when it's going through waves. They, theirs takes a little minute to scan through. But what happens is it shows up here, like under your manager, all your, your plugins show up here, like. In other words, when you select a location, you press scan. It's gonna, okay, it's going to say scan right here. It's going to give you an option where you can turn it off. You don't have to scan your plugs on each startup. Machine stores them. So when you go over here under manager, you'll notice like once it's done, all your plugins will show up here. Okay, we can go through the whole shebang, whatever. They're all they're all in there. And where it says scan and startup, you can turn that off like so. So you don't have to have that on each and every time. If you want to clear them, you can clear them. If you got some new ones, you know, if you got some new VSTs, you add them into the VST folder, you have to press rescan here or rescan here to bring the new ones in. Okay. And your 64 bit ones, you know, you have a little 64 bit um, icon here. You can take a look at those. So once you do that, let's say if you're over here on a sound, let's, uh, for example, like that kick or whatever, kind of an airy, real airy sounding kick. Now you can apply your plugins on a group level or a sound level. If you're doing it on a group level, make sure you're on a group tab. Okay. Well, you, all, well, and you also can do it on, on, a, on a master level also. But for example, if you're in a group level, these are the built in ones. The ones that you scan, they'll show up here. Okay. So 
let's say if I go in here, no, I don't want to run too long in the video. I'm just going to grab, um, I'll do the SSL, I'll do the SSL EQ like so we'll bring that guy up all right then there's the SSL EQ all right so now that whole entire group would get affected by this plugin and which is basically something you don't have to do but you can do it so you hear the audio being affected it's getting a little deeper and deeper which is like ridiculous right there was like too much bass here's the highs let's adjust the hi-hats on that you hear that high getting a little, a little more crispier super crispy You get the idea that's bad EQing right there I'm, I'm putting too much bass in that and all that but you know just give you an idea okay and you know <clears throat> your plugin chain is here you have four 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 tabs for the group you can uh rearrange them like this like if you have a certain order in your chain that you want to have you might want to have a you know whatever here first whatever there first reverb eq and a compressor you can do that and uh let's turn this off right quick uh, and uh, let's see here same thing on the sound tab you know you have four tabs here you know your sampler tab is always going to be actually three your first one's going to be you know for your polyphony and all of that and same thing on your master your master channel here you have four tabs here and again four tabs in your group and on your sound the first one's going to be used up because you have the the polyphony and stuff like that <clears throat> but anyway, um, flexible. So that's how you get it in. Now, another thing you can do if you want to get into, let's say, inserts and for your auxes. Now, if you want to set up your auxes and inserts, it's pretty easy. Um, let's use group H for an example. <clears throat> we'll close this down a little bit. Let's say on this first sound, we want this one to be an EQ. We'll drop that in. Um, the second one, let's say if we wanted this one to be a phaser again, this is just preference. This is something that you don't have to do. I'm just doing this for an example phaser. I'll put a compressor here and we'll do a limiter on the last one here. Okay. We'll do that like so <clears throat> the quick way to do it is on your sound tab. We'll jump on the out. We'll go over here. Input. Again, I'm using my little trackpad on my, my laptop, so you gotta forgive me. I'm not using the mouse. So if I'm going kind of slow, moving this little thing around is like kind of bugged out. <laughs> and uh let's see. Input. And another input. All right, boom. All right, so now we have all the inputs set up. They're all on internal, as you see right there. So now if I want the EQ to go out into the phaser, okay, you notice how it changed a little bit. So now they all show up where it says phaser comp and limiter. So I bust this one out to the phaser, okay. Then when I get to the phaser, same thing. I bust that one out to the comp. The limiter will just leave to the group. All right, so <clears throat> on the EQ, we'll basically just choose, you know, our favorite EQ, whatever the case may be. You know, so if I go back over here, let's say we use, uh, I guess I could use an API, but nah, we'll just we'll just do something simple for the video. We'll go back to the SSL. The SSL is one of my favorite EQs, just my, just my preference, whatever. All right. And the phaser, we'll just use the factory one. We'll just use the native instruments one. 
compressor, same thing. We'll just, I don't know. We'll use maybe like, oops, this little trackpad driving me crazy. I have a wireless mouse, guys. Sorry about that. That's my, all my jacks are used up because I got the hardware controller on and the 3.0 jacks are used up to my MIDI controllers and stuff like that. I ran out of little thing. I got to get a USB hub. That's what I need to get. You know, if anybody has a good suggestion of one, let me know. And we got the H comp here. We use that as our compressor. This three to one ratio is pretty good. That's not bad. And the limiter. We'll, we'll throw a limiter on the last one here, you know, just to tame those, those transients and, uh, keep stuff from clipping. We'll use, uh, this one. We'll use the L one, something that we don't have to use, but I'm again, I'm just using it just for, you know, for the video, just for fun. These are basically a lot of these are mastering plugins anyway. I'm just I'm just doing this for the video just to sh just to show it up because you know there there's ways you can do this with with other methods as well. All right, so now we have that set up. So now when we're back over here in the group, when we're over in the out tab, I'm gonna do this on a group level. Now you can do it on a sound level also. Like if you had one particular sound, for example. Let's say if I go back to a sound level and maybe we just target maybe like that kick. Okay, I'm not going to solo it. So let's just say we just want to use the aux here. And let's say we want to use the EQ on that kick. Now you can hear the EQ and you hear that phaser kind of coming in on it. Kind of like that tubey kind of. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the snare. Kind of has like that little phasery sound. If I want to put the EQ on it. So now it's going from the EQ down. If I just wanted to go from the comp down. You notice how you don't hear the, let me explain this a lot better. Okay. So this, wait, I didn't want to do that. When you're selecting your auxes, it's going to be from wherever you start down. Okay. It's going to be like, if I start from the EQ right here, it's going down. So it will be like from the EQ on down. If I, if I select phaser, it's going from the phaser down. If I select comp, it's going from the compressor down. If I put a limiter, it's just going to be the limiter. So if you want to get all the effects at one time, use the first one. You know, I hope that that makes sense. So that's how that works. It kind of, it's, it's, it's a chain. You know, it's a multi-effects chain. Same same with the auxes. You know, you got two for each channel. And you also can, you know, you can come over here and, um, you know, adjust the output level. See while the other sounds are dry, there's nothing on those. So that's on the sound level. Now, while that's on a, a sound level, if I go over here to the group level and add, um, let's say a limiter or a comp EQ, whatever, whatever you know, whatever the case may be, you know, the, the choice is yours. So you just want to experiment with that. And you get some different effects. Um, you know, doing things like that, you know, and then you also have the other tabs here, you know, so it, you have full and total control over that. So the choice is basically yours. I mean, you know, and then if you want to come back in the chain and, you know, 
switch up some things. Like if I go back over here to group H and let's say, Hey, that phaser is getting on my nerves. I don't, I don't like the way that phaser is making my audio kind of phase in and out. Cause you have a paint icon down here and that you can use that like a fuse from one sixteen. Let's say if you put one fourth notes, you can paint in your hi hats or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> Kick snares, things of that nature. So let's say I go. So you know what? I don't want that phaser anymore. It's driving me crazy. And let's say I put, I don't know. What about some reverb? Put that on there. Control the size of that a little bit. Go back to group A. And I like how that sounds. That sounds a little. Might be a little too much. Mix that down a little bit. Yeah. Go back to that sound. We gotta find that kick, man. That kick is sounding bugged out. This one here. We'll just, I still have it labeled as phaser, but we know it's not. Well, you get the idea. So, you know, that that's basically how chaining multi effects would work. And uh, one of the key parts to that is make sure that you do label these, you know, so you know, I'm doing it fast for the video, but we know this one right here, we changed the reverb. So I'll change that to reverb. Okay, so now we know when we go to our auxes here, see it says reverb. It no longer says phaser, it says reverb. So that's pretty much how that works. I'm not gonna run too long, or rather I'm not gonna run too long on this one. Again, it's your boy Joe Fontaine of the VIP Sound Lab, and I hope to see you guys on the website. I have the link in the description.